in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed the sense of seriousness they give to everything they receive is higher and so their results so i trust that the lord will bless you online community i love you we love you keep connecting and the lord will change you in the name of jesus christ also to remind us it's not too much to always remind us um to always know why we are here and what is obtainable hallelujah whenever you come into a place a spiritual atmosphere it's not enough to just sit down and listen to the man of God enjoy worship it's important to discern and ask questions what are the as we call it here the spiritual possibilities that are obtainable in this atmosphere every anointing every atmosphere commands certain levels of results and it's important we know the possibilities that are here not just on this ground but upon our lives and upon this ministry so that we can maximize it hallelujah the first thing that we always pray for and expect to happen to anyone who comes to this place is that you have a very solid encounter that's the first thing that must happen an encounter with Jesus an encounter with the Holy Spirit it is very very important we've been called to communicate encounters in the life of people they must they must come into the consciousness of the reality of Jesus Christ the reality of the person of the Holy Spirit number two transformation one of the things that God has granted us the grace to do and we do this all the time is to communicate thoughts that have the power and the ability to alter the paradigms of people are we together a man's life can only be a summation of his thinking his understanding and all of us are products of different environments uh, with different conditionings different perspectives about God about life about our journey here on earth and it's our assignment to correct bring in new ideas and repeat them until they become persuasions that create our reality so it's very important one of the things that happens here every week is a paradigm shift as you keep receiving the word of God it has the ability to change your perception so that you begin to look at life from a new light, a new perception. Above culture, above the social um, understanding and so on and so forth. Are we together? Number three is an encounter with the true spirit of revival, an awakening and revival. There are so many people who come here in groups. This place has, in a measure, become like a place of pilgrimage. Every week, this is like our Jerusalem in this region. People coming from all over the nation, groups, churches, leaders, individuals, people who just want to take the fire. There are people who are saying, I used to be on fire. I used to love God. I've gassed out, I've run out of all my sermons as a man of God, as a leader, as a father. I'm confused. I need a place for revival and awakening. And this is such a place where you come and you take a fresh fire. Fresh grace is released upon you. New motivation to spur you to do.
greater works for him. And finally, this is a place where you experience the demonstration of the power of God. We believe in miracles. We believe in signs. We believe in wonders. We believe in every possibility that can spring forth from the Holy Spirit. This is an atmosphere where we do not tame the possibilities of the Spirit through religion and through the traditions of men. The Holy Spirit is given unlimited access to manifest all that can be in Him for the building of the people. And so this is a place where the Holy Spirit finds unrestrained access and you can have Him interrupt our services as He wills, bless people, all kinds of manifestations. There is no demonstration of the Holy Spirit that is truly of the Spirit that will be ignored no matter how controversial it looks, no matter how unreceptive it appears to be, we give him unrestrained access because we realize that the Holy Spirit will never communicate anything that does not proceed from Jesus. Are we together? And if he brings an experience, it is because someone's life is dependent on it. And so we will not box his possibilities using our religious ideologies and then let people go back the way they came just because we want to preserve a mold. Now don't confuse the activity of the Holy Spirit with irresponsibility. We're a very matured and responsible ministry and we know that all things should be done decently and in order. However, within the limits of responsibility, we must give him complete room to find expression. Hallelujah. So pray one minute and say, Lord, let everything that you desire to happen for me today, to happen to me today, let it find expression. Go ahead and pray. Please make sure you pray. Holy Spirit, help me. I've come tonight for an encounter. I've come tonight for transformation. I've come tonight for revival. I've come tonight for impartation come tonight for a miracle i need a miracle i desperately need one i need a breakthrough my life is at the mercy of a prophetic word that can change me so go ahead and give me that word So we bow as we enter the throne room and we cast ourselves down at your feet. You are holy, thou art holy, there is none. That is where we must be. Let's sing it one more time. Lord, we bow as we enter the throne and we cast ourselves down at your feet. by the power of your spirit in Jesus name I pray tonight I really want to challenge us and I want us to pay very close attention to the things that I'll be sharing hallelujah 
I hope that will be as fast as possible so that we can pray. I would love for us to spend a few minutes praying tonight. Um, I believe in prayer. This ministry was built upon prayer. I believe in the efficacy of prayer when it is done with understanding and done with all your heart. Are we together? Prayer enforces realities, but then prayer without knowledge is just a religious burden. The power of prayer is the light upon which the prayer comes from. You don't just pray just by shouting or rolling. No, it must be from the strength of knowledge. Prayer is only powerful when it stems from a paradigm that is consistent with the word of God so that we do not pray amiss and waste our time shadow boxing. Praise the Lord. Now, when you look around the nation, our nation here in Nigeria, there seems to be all kinds of sad stories. Please pay attention. From the recession, officially declared that the nation is in a state of recession, which is not a good testimony for any nation, because that means that there will be an increase in the rate of crime, there will be an increase in the rate of perversion. Are we together? Um, standards will be compromised, values will be compromised, and all kinds of wrong things will be allowed to find expression. Um, fear looms the heart of people everywhere. There's all kinds of confusion. People who have labored for years working in different corporations now being downsized because the various parastatals and companies can no longer take, you know, people. And so they have to downsize people. There are companies that are downsizing people in the thousands. I mean, you just get up and come to work in the morning and see a notice board with your name. And if you're not fortunate, you and your wife and maybe any other person, you know, yeah, so it's, we must, we must sincerely um, reckon with the fact that it, it's generally speaking, it seems to be a very difficult time for people, not just financially, but the trauma of living in an environment where um, you, humanly speaking, do not know what will happen next. Are we together now? You don't know what will happen next. Parents are confused. Obviously, a major part of our leaders are confused. Their policies are clearly a product of trial and error. And um, corporations are confused. Families are confused. Their children being taken out of school because the parents cannot afford it. I think it's more serious than most people think it is, uh, especially because many of us here are young people and a number of us are in some way still dependent on some form of support, directly or indirectly. Chances are that we will trivialize the gravity of what is happening around the nation because somehow we just know that someone somewhere is responsible for our needs. But I, I want to really wake us up tonight and share with us a few keys the ember months generally in this nation i don't know for what reason has been characterized by a lot of um, phobia there's such a phobia for the ember months because most people over time have seen that it comes with certain not too pleasant experiences but then one of the things that we have been taught in this place and i've held as a personal conviction is that there is a mystery of exemption. Everybody say there is a mystery of exemption. But exemption is not a product of desire. Exemption, like many other realities in the kingdom, depends on access to knowledge, access to the keys that control those results. Desire is good, is a starting point of anything, but it's not enough. Desire in itself cannot produce any result. There are many well-meaning people who um, desire certain things in their lives. There are people who desire the anointing. There are sincere pastors who want more of God's glory upon their lives, their congregations. There are ministries that sincerely desire growth and increase and expansion and results. 
there are jobless people who sincerely desire jobs there are those working who sincerely desire promotion there are barren women who desire children are we together there are all kinds our, our society is full of genuine desires but you see desires by themselves do not produce results are we together much more than desires we must have access to the truths that will deliver our expectations to us and so if we must make maximal use of the remaining months of this year and this period of our lives it is important for us to again and again number one probe the foundation of our convictions probe the informations that you hold as true the bible reveals to us that there is a possibility that what a man calls light can be darkness he says be careful lest your light be darkness so i can hold on to a truth that may be based on my perception look like light but based on god's reference point may be darkness are we together so the bible teaches that we receive with meekness meekness requires that you bring yourself to the position of a learner not necessarily an ignorant person but one who realizes that there are more possibilities than he or she has experienced so far it's a very powerful state in the spirit it's one of the states that attracts the presence of the holy spirit to the life of a man the moment you come to an acknowledgement that there can be more than you have known and that the limit of your experience is not the limit in God you immediately attract the presence of the Holy Spirit there are a kind of people and there is a kind of spiritual posture that will attract the Holy Spirit to come and do business with you and one of such is a heart of meekness we live in a society where there are many people who and um, many of us are what we call elites we we come from uh, a very strong intellectual background we've gone to school we're intelligent we have all kinds of accolades in honor of our intellectual investments but let me tell you something about god when in god's dealings with man regardless of what you have acquired intellectually which is very useful when you come before him you must realize that in the kingdom there's no such thing as a learned person you are either learning or you are in ignorance the concept of being learned with god does not exist are we together so you'd never put a full stop to your pursuit with god there is always a new dimension there is always a new possibility outside of the scope our current scope of understanding and the moment we just bring that position spiritually and we say we are learned i know this i know that i know this the bible says blessed are they that hunger and thirst only those who communicate their hunger and thirst to be filled if i'm not thirsty and you bring me water i may not appreciate the value of that water and then more so if you force me to take the water that which is supposed to be an act of kindness will now offend me are we together that's why most times god will not by himself get up and initiate change in people he will allow them you see let me tell you the way heaven works heaven does not act heaven reacts everybody say heaven reacts there must be an action from the earth as a communication of desperation a communication of passion a communication of need and desire so when a man cries unto God, Lord, have mercy on me. Thou son of David. Jesus saw him, right? At the border of Jericho. He saw that man seated there. Only God knows how long he had been there. But it was costly for Jesus to assume the man needed help. And so he kept passing. And the man shouted the more. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. The woman with the issue of blood. When she came, the Bible says she said to herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, the centurion left his house and came where Jesus was, pleading for him to do a miracle. So 
every time you need God's attention, you attract it by hunger, desire, and a desperate, repeated communication of that. You don't just sit down and wish and say, God knows my heart. No, God needs an expression. Those who really keep growing in the spirit are those who have made it a culture to never be satisfied with where they are. To never be satisfied with what they've seen. I've experienced the anointing, but Lord, I know there can be more. I've experienced prosperity, but I know there can be more. I've experienced wisdom. I've had encounters. I've had visions. I've had the, the operation of the prophetic, the miraculous. But I know that there is always more in God. So never put a full stop to your work with God. Don't even allow the current results in your life because of how frequent the results are they can build a fortification around your life that stops you reduces your impetus to pursue God and seek him more hallelujah you know the, the greatest limitation to progressive success is the last one you've had failure does not make people backslide failure spurs people to do more but when you start having results, chances are that on the strength of obvious results that you're having, there might not be any desire to seek him again. After all, I, I may not be in a very high level of the healing anointing, but at least there is something. Here and there, there are miracles. After all, I may not have very deep access to revelation, but at least I have a few things to share. That attitude in the Bible is called complacency complacency when you build inertia to your pursuit so that it now impedes your desire to move forward the, your passion must be fresh it must be consistent and you, you, you should never turn down your desire for God hallelujah so this is very important what I'll be sharing with us tonight um I have come to a realization that any responsible man of God, any responsible ministry, any responsible structure, any responsible leadership, among other things, must develop an attitude to respond to the needs of the people. Are we together? When you build people, if God brings us together in a ministry like this, our growth must be intentional, our growth must be specific. And then our growth must be, it must be consistent. And it is the assignment of every pastor, every man of God, every spiritual leader to stay with God and not just stay with God alone, to sit through the agency of the spirit of wisdom and design a system of teaching people such that their growth becomes holistic. Are we together? Please, if God is calling you into ministry here or you are a pastor, you must understand that you cannot guess the way to build people. There is a system of growth. The same way a student goes to school and um, the, 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 the faculty or the department designs a system. We call it a program. That program is supposed to make the student come out with a certain understanding. The program is intentional. Now here and there you could alter the programs with a few things or upgrade and add a few things but there is a structure. You build people not through guesswork. You build people through structure. You see, this that we are doing now, we are not doing anything new necessarily. There is a spiritual system that has been created that makes people powerful, that makes people rise to a point of kingdom influence. So what we are doing is we are aligning to and with the ways of God to guide and help every one of us to rise. Say amen. So every pastor must have a system. If God has declared that this for instance is our year of multiplied grace and influence then it should speak in the kind of messages that are communicated because people rise up by revelation. Are we together? So you must be able to communicate the truths that build people along the line of prophecy and then you must communicate the truths 
it is up to the man of God to stay with the Holy Spirit and monitor the spiritual growth of a people and bring relevant teachings that number one are life applicable no matter how deep your teachings are if they do not translate to life applicable principles that people can use to produce results in their lives every day then you are wasting their time are we together if the truths that you learn here cannot be used in your business cannot be used in your workplace cannot be used in school cannot be used in your place of influence wherever your sphere of influence and cannot be used in your own personal work with God the moment there is please someone respond to that baby can we have someone please hallelujah praise the Lord the moment there is a system or there is no system to communicate knowledge to you in such a way and a manner that your growth becomes holistic you know one of the saddest things and and, and i say this with a very heavy heart with um many churches and many ministries in nigeria is that the men of god do not build the people intentionally to prevail they don't build them intentionally to be agents of transformation they do not build them to be men of power so we have people of prayer who cannot do well we have people of prosperity who are bankrupt spiritually so every man of god must bring teachings that are not only life applicable but must make sure that the teachings are actually building people i personally believe that I will never be part of a church or a ministry where I sit under that anointing, that man of God, that influence for a, 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 an appreciable period of time and I cannot trace exactly the things that are happening in my life. I think it's an utter waste of time. Praise the Lord. So I want you to respect and value the teachings that come here. By the grace of God, we are not just spiritual people, we are intelligent people. We have stayed by the spirit of God to, uh, to find out the systems of the kingdom and the things that make things work and some of the things that I share with you are principles that I live by not principles I practice principles I live by and they are principles that have been responsible for undeniable results in the lives of people organizations territories and so on and so forth so these ideas are not a guesswork they are not they are not cunningly devised fables as the apostle will say they are tailor-made to build you it's up to you to submit yourself to those teachings and practice them appropriately and then you will see your life rise may your life rise in jesus name may your life rise in jesus name May you be so powerful that as a person you are equivalent to a nation in the name of Jesus Christ. So I have a few things that I want to share with us tonight that in my opinion are the keys that can help any man survive the storms and the vicissitudes that these seasons have brought upon us. There are principles that when we learn we will be able to regardless of the storms um, we will ride above it and thereby demonstrating the fact that the kingdom of God is a more superior kingdom to any democracy to any kind of system we are demonstrators of the reality the Bible says that we have been called to show forth to show forth right is the Greek word is 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 the is a is the word dogzazo not just is an a manifestation of the glory is showing forth like like um someone will bring people and show the products a display so when men say there is a casting down and you sustain the keys to say there is a lifting up you will compel men and they will want to come and find out what principles do you use there is no one on earth who wants to remain with an understanding that is not producing results even if do, they do not know that they need change everybody wants change that's why we go to herbalist that's why we change soap we change houses 
we change institutions nobody wants to camp around anything that does not produce and let me tell you something the options that are in the world now have reduced the patience of people so the moment there is no result people don't give you a second chance they move immediately if you have a product for instance generally speaking and someone patronizes you and your product cannot deliver to expectation that's all it will take a long time before they return to you are we together so it is with ministry so it is with a lot of spiritual things i i can literally sense the frustration in the hearts of many pastors many members they are asking questions that for many people no one is asking is answering will we continue like this if there is a god in heaven why are we this way spiritually financially and otherwise hallelujah Matthew 13 verse 11 popular scripture let's start from there tonight Jesus was teaching and then he said he made a very interesting statement Matthew 13 verse 11 it's projected please let's read together one to read let me just let me just guide us a little to understand really what the kingdom of heaven is when the bible talks of the kingdom most times you find out especially in the new testament that there is an interplay of um, the phrase or the clause the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven they are not the same they are not the same the kingdom of god represents any sphere any territory where the sovereign power and the sovereign control of God can find expression. Take note of my choice of words. Any sphere, any atmosphere where the sovereignty of God can find expression is called the kingdom of God. So the lake of fire is part of the kingdom of God because he designed it, he created it, he still has control over it. The heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord. The earth is is his footstool and every other place the psalmist said where can i hide from your presence so everywhere the influence of god can be extended to everything that was created by him constitutes his kingdom are we together so when you are talking of the kingdom of god you are referring to every sphere of influence practically speaking everywhere is the kingdom of god everywhere but when you talk of the kingdom of heaven now listen when jesus was teaching right in what we call the beatitudes um when he got to matthew 5 6 he began to teach them and he says thy kingdom come then he says thy will be done in earth as it is in the heavens are we together so the kingdom of heaven represents any sphere and any territory where the sovereign control of God has been permitted to find expression. Now, not a sphere where God's sovereignty can find expression. A sphere where the sovereignty can or has experientially been allowed to find expression. And that happens when his will is being done. Are we together? So the whole earth belongs to God, but there are still witchcraft covens. Are we together? There are still lives. Everybody was created by God, but not everybody belongs to Him. Are we together? So the influence of the kingdom of God is everywhere, with every witch, with every wizard. But only those who belong to Him, they have come into the experience of the kingdom of heaven. They have allowed their lives to be an expression of the will of God. The kingdom of heaven only finds expression in any territory and any life where the will of God experientially is being done are we clear about that now so that we do not just confuse the words I just felt like putting them in so that we can have it in perspective the kingdom of God his sovereign sphere he fills all things and in all the kingdom of heaven every territory every space where 
he has been allowed to find expression. A very clear example of this is the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Right? You can call it the Kingdom of Nigeria everywhere. But not every part of the Kingdom of Nigeria is directly as we know experientially under the control of the federal government. Is that true? We have a forest like Sambisa that is being contended with. There are certain people within that territory who are refusing the sovereignty of the nation. We have other aspects here and there. We have um, several pockets of places who have refused to subscribe to the laws of the land. Now, those areas, those territories are rebel territories and the assignment of the government is to insist through the agency of the military until every territory within that sphere comes under the reign and the rule of the federal government. That is the true concept of sovereignty. Are we together? So God's desire is not just for the kingdom of God to be known and understood, but that the kingdom of heaven, what we call heaven, right, will find expression in every life and across every territory. When that happens, there will be no more poverty. When that happens, there will be no more oppression. When that happens, there will be no more death. When that happens, there will be no more sickness. When that happens, there will be no more hostility, hatred, and all of these things. And then heaven, the heaven of heavens, as revealed from scripture, is a prototype of that possibility. So we see heaven as the end of what earth should be like. Are we together? It has already happened in heaven. So there's no point asking, can it happen? A sample of it is already in existence now. A sphere where there is absolute love, absolute joy, no lack, abundance, peace, and so on and so forth. So our assignment is through the ministry of the Holy Spirit to keep bringing pieces and portions and dimensions of that reality to our lives and our environment. And the more they successfully arrive here, everything about our lives begin to be a reflection of that reality there. The dimension we choose to embrace is the dimension we will see. Are we together? So when the Bible says all things are possible, he speaks from the perspective of the heavens. It is up to the saints here on the earth to find out the keys that can make those all things possible. But simply because of our passion and our rate of search is so slow, our lifetime becomes too short for us to reveal all the possibilities. So we die only experiencing some. But God's desire is not for us to experience some. His desire is for the fullness. The fullness of all that heaven is. is to find expression. To a point that God will have to help us by himself. And take the old earth and the whole heaven away. And bring in another one. Are we together? But as many as received him. Even to them that believed on his name, he gave them power to become. Power to become. Power to become. Become what? The experience. Not just the sons of God. I told you that the word son of God is not just one begotten by a man. The word son of God is an office in heaven. It didn't start with the New Testament. Son of God is an office in heaven. That's why women can also be called sons of God. Ladies can also be called sons of God. Old people can also be called sons of God. It's not about gender. It's not the way we perceive sonship like, you know, you give birth to something. Because we were not, Jesus Christ was begotten, but we were adopted, right? By the spirit of adoption. So let's look at a few things. A few keys that will help us. I have been intrigued. I still am by the fact that life can be absolutely predictable to those who have the keys and have an understanding of the ways of God. I will keep drumming this until it enters our spirit and becomes 
our templates in life that when you allow your life to chance listen please when you allow your life to guesswork when you allow your life to emotional suggestions you're going to live a life of failure you will be a victim of too many situations and circumstances and there are so many people who are victims of they try anything whenever they have challenges or as they live their lives they guess per day what do i do today what do i think is the smartest decision to make and most of the informations that guide our decisions are wrong are wrong they were fabricated by people who do not know god or people who do not understand and honor his ways so most of the decisions we make in our lives are primarily wrong because most of our decisions are inherited transferred from father to mother transferred from one intelligent man to another or transferred from one confused but arrogant person or system to the other there are few people who have come to a point of humility to truly understand and acknowledge that we do not know so much it is my I, I pray every time and I tell God bring me to a point in my life where I never get too confident of myself a point where I know that if the Holy Spirit and his word does not guide me I don't trust my decisions hallelujah you want a life of transgenerational relevance you desire a life that transcends the limitations that come with society a life that is recession proof a life that is above the vicissitudes of life a life that is above frustration a life that is above regrets a life that is above pain a life of meaning and a life of relevance do the following number one whoever desires such a life any church that desires such an experience any organization that desires such a reality the first requirement is that you must have a genuine encounter with Jesus don't trivialize what I'm saying write it and please listen a genuine encounter with Jesus not just an encounter with the Holy Spirit a genuine encounter with Jesus I have come to discover that there are many people in church there are many professing Christians who have not had a genuine encounter with Jesus. You can know all the church words. You can know all the, the cliches, the Christian talk. You can be an elder in church. You can be a pastor. But the question is, have you had a genuine encounter with Jesus? An encounter with Jesus is not just coming out for an altar call. You can act drama. People act drama where they get born again and go back and genuinely they are sinners. People act drama as pastors who lead people. They even pray in tongues in the drama, but they are not born again. An encounter with Jesus. That's why the salvation of many people looks like it's fake because it's not born from a genuine encounter. Let me show you a scripture. Um... Luke 24, please. Media help us. Luke 24. We we'll look at verse 28 down to 34. I may not read every part of it, but let's see how far God will help us. Thank you. Luke 24. This was the experience of Jesus with the two men um, on their way to a city called Emmaus. The Bible says, And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. Let's read on. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is fast spent. And he went to tarry with them. This is Jesus now. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, listen, it says, He took bread and blessed it and break it and gave them. 31. And their eyes were open, and they what? Until your eyes is open, you cannot know him. Listen, stop there, please. It says, and their eyes were open and they knew him. That's not that they recognized him alone. They had an encounter with him. And they testified. They said something. 32. Let's read on, please. And they said to one another, read on. Did not our hearts burn within us? 
while he talked with us by the way and while he opened us up to the scripture an encounter with Jesus that something will burn upon your spirit as the word of God is coming something burns upon your heart I'm telling you many believers do not have this experience at all at all that's, that shows in how much we respect him that shows in how much we value spiritual things we sit down under different kinds of men of God we sit down under different kinds of anointings different kinds of teachings but we do not desire genuine encounters did not our hearts burn conviction did not our hearts burn conviction 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 when Peter spoke right uh, the encounter of Pentecost the Bible says they, are, they were pricked to the heart that's why you can have people sit down in church like this and a man of God is preaching others are crying and you see them look and immediately after the message they get up with their conscience seared the Bible says with hot iron no conviction no willingness for transformation Many people do not have an encounter with Jesus. Many people do not have an encounter with Jesus. Don't just desire to recite salvation prayer. Desire a genuine encounter that will show. Let me tell you, it is impossible to have an encounter with Jesus and remain the same. No. It has nothing to do with whether your faith is working or not. It must work, I guarantee you. When Jesus met the woman at the Samaritan woman, remember the story? The Samaritan woman at the well. This was a woman who had been married to over six men, you know, five men, and the sixth person she was with was not even her husband. Terrible situation. And Jesus by the well, he began to engage her in a conversation. At the end of it, do you know what the Bible says? A solid encounter. She left, in other words, her encounter with Jesus made what she was doing before his arrival trivial. Let me tell you, one of the indices of an encounter is a re-evaluation re of your life. If your priorities do not change, you've not met Jesus. No way. You can't tell me your value system, your way of life, your desire, your passion, your aspiration before and after you met him is still the same. No, sir. When you meet Jesus, you will shift for sure. Are we together? Many people's lives do not change. No conviction. Their, their, their priorities are not altered at all. You were an unserious person before you met God. Now that you claim you meet him, you are still unserious. Unserious with the things of God. Unserious with the house of God. No, you've not had an encounter. Uh, you know why I'm telling us this? If people deceive you, you can grow past their deception. But when you deceive yourself, it is true deception. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? For great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly are everything. Everything, Lord, you are everything to me. Everything, everything, Lord, you are everything to me. Sing one more time.
for the night cometh where no man can walk again. In fact, the Bible says it this way. It says the zeal of the Lord. There is such a thing called the zeal of the Lord. Do you have it in your life? You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be a pastor's wife. It has nothing to do with ministry. The zeal of the Lord. Everybody say the zeal of the Lord. You must pray that the zeal of the Lord will eat you up like a cancer. Where everything that has to do with God, everything that has to do with the house of God, you give it utmost seriousness. Hallelujah. There are people who are not serious at all about the things of God. When they say pray, others are praying. You see them stand and they are just watching. They don't care. Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit for one day? I've been thinking about it. Oh, the prayer department is organizing a meeting for that. Um, I, I am busy. Less is fair over every spiritual thing. You've not read your Bible for one month. It doesn't matter. God will help me. You see, let me tell you something. It's, it's called the spirit of complacency. It's a dangerous state to be. Whether or not you are a believer, you've got to be passionate about something in your life. Terrorists are passionate about something. Are we together? Unbelievers are zealous and passionate about something. The zeal of the Lord must consume you, brothers and sisters. This lukewarm, careless, if it happens, that's all right. If it doesn't happen, that's all right. That kind of lifestyle will never make you someone who will be relevant transgenerationally. Many of our parents were like that. Part commitment to a harbor list, part commitment to a church, part commitment to education, part commitment to mentorship, part commitment to financial intelligence, part of everything. They never stood out in anything. Do you know it's better for you to be passionately in error? At least you have standards. It, it honestly is better if I see somebody and you are a chronic sinner you are a chronic drunkard it's faster for you to be born again that's why God chose Saul when he saw Saul and saw his zeal if he was determined to make sure someone died nothing would change him, not even the rain he would get up and do it it's called zeal question all of us here and those following me online I don't care whether you think you are born again or not do you have zeal for God don't say yes. Your life should show it. Do you have zeal for the things of God? If no, when will you have it? The day you die? The day the devil finishes with you? The day you lose the job? The day you cannot lift one hand again? The day you wrongly mentor a generation? The day life whips you and you no longer have options? They that seek him early, find him. There is a time. There is a time to seek God. Let me tell you, you don't seek God anytime you want. There is a time you seek God. Say, Lord, give me zeal for you. Say it, Lord, give me zeal for you. Not zeal for preaching. Uh -uh. Not zeal for ministry. Not zeal for programs. Zeal for God. I can look at your life and know the extent of your zeal for God. I look at the books in your life 
and I know your zeal for God. I see your commitment in the house of God and I know your zeal for God. I see your passion to see others saved and I know your zeal for God. Now that's a big one because many believers, the concept of soul winning has dried in our lives completely. Read your Bible. Everybody who encountered God by themselves, they were too grateful to keep quiet. The madman in Gadara, the moment he had that encounter, the Bible says he ran to the Decapolis, 10 cities, and brought people to Jesus. The Samaritan woman, she left her water there and ran to the city. Come, see a man who has told me everything about my life. And the Bible says when the men met Jesus, they say we believe now not because you brought us. We have seen for ourselves. Saul of Tarsus, when he encountered Jesus Christ, in life and in death, I want to ask you a very serious question. And God is asking you this question. Whose life today has been changed because of your being born again? It's an index to measure your zeal. Can you turn and say somebody's life, Elijah, come, come. Elijah has come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. This guy was a drunkard, but hallelujah, he's changed today because of my life. I was an instrument. My zeal for God was so powerful that he was able to give up everything. Let me tell you, when you are around people and they don't see a need to exalt God more than what they are currently doing, your light is not shining. That someone talks with you and goes back home, he can't read again. He can't eat again. You, you, it's like an infection. The person sits down. He would try to pretend as if what you said didn't enter him. But you've transferred something. And in the night, he's rolling from left to right of the bed and he gets up and kneels down and says, Lord, please, I can't, I can't fight this war forever. You see, when when bringing many people to the saving knowledge of Jesus and seeing their life transformed is not your passion you will never carry the anointing if you like fast for 100 days is the Lord speaking to us tonight I'm speaking to every one of you if Jesus Christ appears right now in Koinonia and says everybody walk through this crowd and hold the hands of someone whose life has been changed because of your existence. How many of us will have someone in our hand? Many of us will walk everywhere and the person will say, no, no, no. I was changed. You saw me in my situation and you left me. It was someone else that came to change me. I was your neighbor for three years. You saw me and you left me. By the mercy of God, someone else. God used someone else. I want you in your mind. Hold the hands of someone whose life is a testament of your zeal for God. And then you will see why many people's prayers are not answered. You will see why many people's passion for anointing and power and crowd. Are we together? Whose life? Who God filled with the Holy Spirit because you are passionate about God? Who stopped smoking and drinking because you came to know the Lord? Whose life, whose confused destiny was brought back in order because of your zeal? Please hear me. If you are here and you are not doing anything for the kingdom, I want you to know that God is not happy with you. Don't allow anybody to deceive you and say you are all right. You are not all right. There is a serious problem. You may not be going to hell, but there is no zeal in your heart. Those whose impact will be transgenerational are those who God is more than church to them. God is more than koinonia to them. God is more than ministry. There are many pastors who don't have zeal for God. They are only preaching because they were transferred to that branch. And I mean, on Sunday you must preach. On Friday you must speak. You must come for koinonia. You must speak to people. There is a routine that you organize 21 days fasting. So you are part of it. You are in the worship team and you must do the rehearsals. If you don't come, what do you tell your head of department? So I am there. Are we together? 
you are a worker in the house of God just because they know you I'm holding the camera just because I have to do it no let me tell you zeal creates passion in you that you even have to pray and say ah let them not say I'm overdoing this passion you are in the worship team every time you are going for rehearsal there is joy in your heart you are not dragging yourself and saying today again no your zeal has died since don't let my love grow cold I'm crying out light the fire again I need your discipline I'm crying out light the fire again don't let my love grow cold I'm crying out light the fire again I need your discipline I'm crying out light the fire again you were so zealous they used to call you pastor now they call you bros do you know why something happened your, your backsliding left you and it became so obvious that the people now felt they are even insulting you calling you there was a name they called you which was a testament of your zeal now everything they are doing you are doing too so they don't see the difference again so they can as well just call you bros when they wanted to gossip and you entered not because you were judging anybody there was your passion for God was so contagious but now as soon as they are saying once you enter they say sit down thank God this guy has completed the equation he will bring another side of the story look let me tell you something eh? if you want to be serious with God just set your face like a flint and go for it if you want to play games with God then at least be bad and go to hell let it be that you were not serious and you went to hell but that you are one leg in one leg out acting as though you love God acting as though you are not serious there are many ladies who are not serious with God. Many sisters are not serious with God. They are serious with marriage. They are serious with relationship. Huh? They are serious with beauty. Nothing is wrong with all those things. But God. There are many parents. In fact, parents own. I say it with, with due respect. Many of our parents are not serious with God. Especially the fathers. The mothers are serious with God. Pain has brought them to God. But many fathers are dead spiritually. And the family is suffering because of their lack of zeal. You pray, they get up and say, keep quiet. Why are you disturbing us? I have a headache, please. Whereas that's the solution to the headache. They stop you. Are we together? Ah. How many parents encourage young people who are serious with God? Stop all this your Jim Jim thing. We started before you were born. But then they have another younger brother who jumps the fence. And they say, talk, God is helping us. At least he's going to school. You see, you see our rating? You see our rating? Zeal for God. How many homes as a home are passionate about God? How many families have contributed to the advancement of the kingdom? When was the last time many families came together to pray? I, I know when the last time was when there was trouble, severe trouble that could threaten the father. Then we would do fire brigade disturbances. And when there is peace, we now say everybody should go. Devotionals, morning devotion in many families have died completely. Completely. Everybody now does his own. You get up, if you're a Pentecostal, you go outside. You go and shout near the fence. If you are, if you are, you are, you are an orthodox or whatever you are, you just open whatever book, you read and sleep while you are reading it. And mock yourself. No zeal. Are we together? We do everything we want to do with our time and our life then the balance of it is what we give God say God you better be grateful I'm giving you this I mean I'm, I'm getting busier by the day 
anything that will take God's place in my life I don't care whether it is fame whether it is money may it not just come to may, may it be far from me in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to check your life because you see love hear me love is like energy it can never be created nor destroyed if I used to love you and I no longer love you I transferred it somewhere for sure if I used to love you and I no longer love you I transferred it somewhere I used to love him now I don't love him that space cannot be empty so the question is what occupied it I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart Lord I will bow Lord, I will bow to you to no other God but you listen I'm speaking specifically right now by the spirit to those who were serious with God before if nobody has told you it's a problem backsliding is a very bad thing are you hearing what I'm saying it's a terrible thing to at one time in your life be serious where did you leave the prayers the nights when you called upon his name where did you keep the fasting who preached you into thinking it was not important what relationship make God look no, like nonsense in your life who asked you out and asked God out of your life what job came into your life and removed everything God out of your life take what I'm saying seriously where did you keep the visions you used to see you solved the problems in people's lives because of how serious and fiery your spirit was but right now, everything passes and there is no eye to see again. And you keep moving around. There are many pastors who need to go back for a retreat. They are still standing, moving around as usual. But we know the wine has finished. There's nothing there again. The zeal of the Lord. To the point that many of us are even ashamed now. Huh? You are ashamed now. The only place you are confident about God is koinonia. How after that you are ashamed because God has looked like nonsense to you. Anti-technology, anti-civilization, anti-socialization. That's your understanding of who God is. Did our hearts not burn within us as he opened the scripture? Hallelujah. Many fathers have left God since sins looking for money left God sins do you know the number of Christians that patronize herbalists you think if the herbalists were not patronized they won't go and look for something else they are in business alive and strong patronized by Christians look let me tell you you know what I'm saying is not a lie you know what I'm saying is not a lie Look, we must get back to that place where God is all and in all. Where God is not just the most important thing. There are four keys I'm giving you tonight. This is just number one. But I must burn it in. There are backsliders that need to run to God. It's not an insult. It's not an insult. Don't allow people keep telling you you are okay. You know when you are not okay. You know when you are not okay everything is going haywire in your life it's a message it's a message don't wait till you are destroyed your joy has left you your peace has left you impact has left you passion has left you the gifts have dried from your life how can you say nothing is wrong how can you fool yourself into thinking nothing is wrong Let me take an altar call. I'm going to take an altar call. Two fiery altar calls. One, you need Jesus. I'm not giving you any long story. You've heard everything I've said. You desperately need Jesus. Two, you need 
genuine restoration you are saying please don't pretend it and, and I'm, I, I don't mean that you just need to step up you were one serious with God for whatever reason sincerely you know between you and God you need a personal revival to come back please I will count one to five nobody is closing their eyes wherever you are inside or outside I want you to stand up and come to the front right now one run like there's fire on the mountain I need revival I can't tell a lie Lord something is wrong with my life I will lay down my idols those of you who are sitting be praying don't be watching who is coming it's none of your business some of you sitting are supposed to be outside so don't sit down watching who is coming and who is not coming I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. Please pray all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Sing it with me. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. Yeah. All about you. All about you. All about you. All about you, Jesus. All about you. All about you. All about you. All about you. All about you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All of you who are out, I like you to cry. Renew my passion, oh God. I don't know where it went to, but it must return this night. Renew my passion. Renew my fire. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamond. There is nothing I I desire compassion. Lord, there is nothing I desire. There is no one I desire. There is no one I desire. There is no one I desire. Make sure you are praying. 
There is no place I desire. There is no place I desire. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life. Please pray in one minute, all of you in front. Lord, affect my life. Change me. Take away that heart of stone. Replace it with a heart of flesh. Lord, let me stop playing games with you. I mean business. I want to live a life of impact. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Here is my life. I want to live. I want to live. Serving my fellow man. Doing the will of God. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. I bring it back to the altar. Take it, oh God. Here is my life. I bring my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my time. Here is my time. I give you my time. Hallelujah. All of you who are out, I want to pray for you. You have my life. You have my life. You have my life. Hey. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. All of you who are standing outside here whether you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time or you are rededicating your life I'd like you to say it passionately as though you are talking to a real person standing close to you say Lord Jesus restore my zeal restore my fire restore my passion I declare this night Take your place. Take your place in my life. I mean business with you. From today, everything that has taken your place in my life, regardless of what it is, I pray that you rise above it. My heart belongs to you my mind belongs to you my body belongs to you take it use it for your glory from today every lifestyle every association that does not please you I part ways with them forever in the name of Jesus I honor you for this decision God bless you please rise up and go back to your seat very quickly celebrate them and thank the Lord thank you 
For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Let's continue. So that's the first key to a life of transgenerational relevance. To a life that will make God vow to defend you. A life of passion. A life of zeal. A life that has truly met God. Number two. The second key you need to rise above the tides and the vicissitudes of life is mental transformation. The second key you need, the power of a renewed mind. Someone is under the anointing, you can just carry them to the back. Paradigm shifts, change of mindsets, ideologies altered shifted for good. There is so much that God wants to do in and through our lives. But our paradigms, listen to me please. Our mindsets, our ideologies limit him again and again. Most believers are taught as powerful as this altar call was it is not all there is to your salvation. There are different dimensions and facets of our salvation. And the consummation of your salvation is the renewal of your mind. First Peter chapter 1 verse 9 please. If we can have it in the amplified version. Please hurry up. First Peter chapter 1 verse 9. First Peter chapter 1. Peter chapter 1. Peter chapter 1. Mambros keta rato shela pariata. Oh come, oh come, Emmanuel, and ransom captivity Israel. Can you help us, media? Oh come, oh come, Emmanuel, and ransom captivity Israel. I like us to read it together. It's projected. One to read. Uh huh. You receive the result, the outcome, the consummation of your faith, the salvation of your souls. It says, receiving the end of your faith, King James says, even the salvation of your soul. The salvation of your soul is the renewal of your mind. When your mind has experientially been brought under the lordship of both the person and the philosophies of Jesus is the culmination of your salvation. At that point, you experientially begin to walk in the benefits and the blessings of salvation. Because the Bible tells us that salvation is a well. There are wells, not just a well. It said, for with joy shall you draw out of the wells, the wells, the wells, divine health, a life of impact, a life of prosperity, 
all in that word soteria it's an unencompassing word it's not just translation from darkness to light the experience of the fullness of the life of God in all its dimensions and the Bible says for that to happen the consummation of it is the salvation of your soul the renewal of your mind paradigms and I, I was teaching I think it was yesterday in the school of ministry and I was teaching students and I taught them that we are programmed in two ways the first programming is called genetic programming. Genetic programming comes from father to son. In sin did my mother bear me and so on and so forth. So we, we receive traits spiritually by inheritance. But the second and more dangerous of the programming is environment. It's called environmental programming. Say environmental programming. We grew up in different regions of the world different regions of Nigeria under different kinds of parenting, under different kinds of exposure with different kinds of experiences are we together? and so our concepts, our perspectives our ideologies about God, ideologies about marriage, ideologies about education, ideologies about greatness, ideologies about a good life ideologies about you name it diverse ideologies influenced by our environment culture our levels of exposure our failures of the past have all environmentally programmed us now when you come to God watch this when you got, when you got born again your mind did not change all of a sudden are we together? There needs to be a system of progressive transformation which is dependent on the allowance that you give the Holy Spirit through the world. It's not by force. You can choose to stop and say, Lord, I peg myself at this level. Thank you for all you've done for me, but I cannot continue with you. You are not going to hell, but you sure will not do much for the kingdom. And the quality of your life will be greatly affected. Are we together? There are two dimensions to our walk with God. There is an encounter with his presence and his person. That's the first dimension to our walk with God. An encounter with his presence and his person. The fruit of that dimension is um, conformity to the image of the Christ. So when you have an encounter with the person of Christ, you have an encounter with the presence of Christ, you are conformed to the image of Christ and you rise in character. The fruit of the spirit is at work in you. Your character becomes Christ-like. That's the benefit of an encounter with the person. But an encounter with the person Christ will not automatically change your destiny and the quality of your life. You must encounter the principles of Christ. You must encounter the mysteries of the kingdom. You must encounter the ideologies and the philosophies of Christ. It's not enough to have an encounter with the person Christ. You must encounter his ideologies, his philosophies, his thinking, his paradigm. You must be willing to exalt the word of God above culture, above your ideologies, above your experience. At that point, the principles of the kingdom you have now embraced and are practicing will begin to bring new results in your life. Everybody say new results. Yeah. You are not going to get a new result as far as the quality of your life is concerned with an old ideology. The Bible puts it beautifully. It says no man puts new wine. Correct? In an old wine skin. No. You cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. New wine must be put in a new wine skin. So your own assignment is to present a new wine skin. And God's assignment is to pour the new wine. Let me tell you how God makes the old wine obsolete. He pours small new wine in the old wine because the Bible says when new wine is poured in an old wine skin, it will tear it. So God introduces something new to your old mindset and it rattles your philosophy, making your beliefs obsolete and you want something new. And that's where true transformation begins. Say, change my mind, oh God. 
say it change my mindset I don't want to begin to tell you how limited our lives can be when we do not sustain a paradigm that is consistent with the word of God and by word of God I mean God's ways of doing things the principles of the kingdom not just scriptures your mindset must come in perfect alignment to God's idea I'll give you an instance as bad and sad as the economy is and I sympathized you know um, I was sympathetic to it we are responsible people so we don't ignore the reality of what is happening in our society how be it in God's system there is a provision say there is a provision there is a provision for a possibility to experience abundance even in the midst of famine now it's up to you to work with the mindset that has been proposed as far as school economic theories government policies are concerned or you can switch and choose to adopt the ideology of the kingdom and then you will see the results divine health there is no such thing as divine health in the physical world divine health is only in Christ there is no such thing as that you are expected to be sick once and again all the time every time without exception are we together now when you begin to adopt the mind of Christ you now find out that there is a possibility in Christ and there is a provision where a man can rise and that your body can be immune to communicable diseases and all kinds of things that destroy people a possibility based on another ideology where you are today is a reflection of how much space you have given God in your mind I've taught us here again and I'll repeat it that mindsets are doorways mindsets are not like doorways they are literally doorways they authorize the entrance of demon spirits to your life and they authorize the entrance of the Holy Spirit to your life the devil can have limited or almost no access to you if your mindset does not allow him even witchcraft curses and all of these things that have plagued the lives of men these causes have gotten unlimited access through certain mental constructions like fear, the planting of fear, bad ideas that ignites the law of expectation. Are we together? The greater part of deliverance is not casting out the devil that is responsible for that operation. The greater part of, of deliverance is the transformation of your mindset. So your mindset changes so that it does not authorize that operation to find expression again. Because when a spirit leaves, the Bible says it will still come back and check. It still calls that place my house. Are we together? The transformation of our minds. In Psalm 78 verse 41, popular scripture here, the Bible says they limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. It was the encounter of those in the nation of, uh, of the, um, the Israelites. Their sojourn out of Egypt. Right? And the psalmist by the Spirit was given a few details there. And he said they limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. Psalm 78 verse 41. They limited the Holy One right they said can god make a wilderness how many times have we limited god with our mindsets and our understandings proverbs 23 verse 7 proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 he leads me and guides me to the city of papa he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city of above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny please sit down I'm sorry I didn't know you were still standing let's read the A part just the A part one to read for as he thinketh in his heart so this is scripture the word heart in many translations is interchanged heart mind 
for as he thinketh in his heart, he didn't say so he will be, so he already is. As he thinketh in his heart, your reality, a messless expression of your ideology. Listen, let me tell you an uncomfortable truth. The quality of your life right now in all its ramifications with no exception, the quality of your life and my life right now is a messless reflection of our ideologies. What we have been able to understand and what we have been able to authorize. This is an uncomfortable truth. It will take a lot of meekness to admit this. What we have been able to understand and what we have been able to authorize. Meaning if we can understand more and we can authorize more of the possibilities of God to find expression, we will rise from where we are to another dimension and another quality of life. Say amen. Koinonia is where it is right now because of the limitation of our mindset. Are we together? Where God has brought us now by grace is dependent on our mindset and our understanding. And where we need to rise to, we have not risen there already because something about our paradigm is limiting us. It could be a paradigm in leadership. It could be a paradigm in, in organization. It could be a paradigm in the anointing. It could be an understanding. There is something as a person and as a ministry we have not yet gotten to that holds the key to our next dimension. If we do not get it, we remain here forever. If we get it, then we rise. Right? Paul the apostle said, I went up by revelation. You don't go up by desire. I went up by revelation. What have you seen? What do you know? What has changed about your perspective that has improved the quality of your life? There are many well-meaning but nonsense ideologies we carry around. One of the ideologies is the concept of the sovereign will of God. We just believe that everything that happens in our life is the sovereign will of God. A very stupid mindset that has been responsible for the pain of many people. So we sit down and we are irresponsible as far as our participation in the outcome of the events of our lives are. And we justify ourselves and say, God planned it, that's why I'm poor. God planned it, that's why I'm not happy. No, sir. The will of God is very clear in his word. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Jeremiah 29, 11, saith the Lord, they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. God can take advantage of a situation and turn it for good. For we know that all things, although not created that way, but they can work together for good. It's a system in God's mercy that makes everything to eventually work for good. But that doesn't mean it cost it. Are we together? The simple paradigm, this change of mindset that my success and your success does not entirely rest on God and not entirely on me. That there is a partnership. Can I use you again? Please. There is a partnership between God and Joshua Selman for the outcome of his life. If Koinonia must rise, it's not just God alone. It's not just Joshua Selman alone. There must be a partnership. There is a role that is exclusive to the office of God. I cannot do it, but there is a part God will not do for me. If you must succeed in your life, in your marriage, there is a role. As a sister, a husband will not just come because God said male and female, he created them. You have a role to play in being virtuous. You have a role to play in being prepared, submissive, with a meek and a quiet spirit. Are we together? And then God has a role to play in convicting the brother and bringing him into your life. You want to become an exceptional CEO. You want to become a very great person. You have a role to play. To have a teachable heart and the humility to be mentored and to be shown the pathway that leads to a great life. God's own is to back up and reward your humility with the required information and access to the right people. Every outcome in your life, including the prayer of salvation, as free as it looks you have to participate this is a revelation many people in the body do not know so they leave everything to God father I have five children you gave them to me 
I, I release them back to you. If you don't pay their school fees, that's your business. Now, that looks spiritual. I lift it up. There is a book in a library. How to come out of financial struggles. You look at it and pass and go to a restaurant. That's the answer to your prayer. You ignore it. There is free to air where a man of God like Samadhemi is preaching from his years of labor and telling you there is a reason why your life is where it is. You just laugh and say all these men, you change the channel. You have demonstrated your unwillingness to experience that dimension of God. Are we together? There is always a part I have to play. Even in the arrival of the anointing in my life, if the anointing just arrived anyhow, everybody will have it. The anointing does not just land like a plane anywhere. Planes don't land anywhere. They have designated places. Well prepared intentionally for their landing. If a plane lands in a forest, what do you call it? Plane crash. You don't call it plane landing. Plane crash. Because it landed in a not designated place. Let me tell you, the anointing of the spirit is holy and precious. It will not just land on any head like that. That head must be prepared for the anointing to come. A body has thou prepared. Not a body did you make available. You prepared it. Esther prepared herself to meet the king. The Bible says that Dothan uh, um, um, prospered because he prepared his way before the Lord. Are you preparing your way to be successful? Or are you hoping that you will be successful? Please sit down. There are many of our loved ones who are not preparing for anything, yet they believe in their hearts that they will be successful. Ask them what they are doing. Ask many pastors, what are you doing for an extraordinary ministry? And they tell you, I'm waiting on God. Wonderful. You finish the fast. What did God tell you to do? There is always something to do to get a desired outcome. There is always something to do to get a desired outcome. God will always commit a responsibility to you. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I commanded this day. Right? That you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. It will not happen by default. Hear me, brothers and sisters. There is the labor dimension of faith. There is the labor dimension of faith. There is a labor dimension of faith. It's not free. It's not a gift. So lazy people have no place in the realms of greatness. Completely. There is no provision for that. Say a renewed mind. The question I want to ask you very quickly this night is what are you doing to renew your mind? What show me the spiritual investments? Show me the intellectual investments you are making. Now that you have acknowledged that something about your paradigm is responsible for the quality of your life, even if you don't have any money in your hand, show me what you are doing. I don't mean what business. Show me the materials you are accessing. Let me see the voices that you are submitting to for mentorship and, and, and transformation. You know, in Nigeria, everybody is a guy of himself. Are we together? Everybody is the boss of himself. Regardless of how ignorant we are, we claim we are the gods of ourselves. We know everything. We live in a world all by ourselves. That's the recipe for failure. As bad as this economy is, there are people, this is about the best year for them so far. Without exaggeration. In every white, this is the year their wives gave birth. This is the year they became millionaires. This is the, the year God shamed their enemies. I mean, they've had, they, they, it's been a bed of roses from January till now. To a point that they're even afraid to testify it. Because people would think they're lying. Yet for others, this is the worst year. They can't wait for December. In Egypt, there was utter darkness. Children were dying. In Goshen, there was life, there was light, there was rejoicing. 
it's up to you to turn your life to Egypt or Goshen. You turn it by light, a paradigm shift. The Bible says, ask for the ancient part. Don't guess, ask for it. It's been found already. There are keys that are responsible for abundance. The key is not business. There are keys responsible for their abundance. There are keys responsible for joy. Joy. There are keys that can take you out of inferiority and complex. There are keys that can help you rise above failure. There are keys that can motivate you through times of pain. There are paradigms. There are understandings. Please hear me. Hear me in the name of Jesus Christ. Invest in changing your mind. Don't invest in dumping information in your mind. Make sure the informations are worth um, committing yourself to. The light you have must be bright enough to turn your night to morning. It's not enough to have light. Is it bright enough? Stars shine in the night, but you still call it night. But when the sun comes, night turns to day. The light you have, is it bright enough to make your night become morning? Because for as long as it is night, weeping endures. Are we together? I am obsessed with knowing where I am missing it in life. My heart is passionate. I pursue wisdom. I pursue wisdom like a jewel that is missing. There is no price that is too much to pursue uncommon mentorship, to pursue wisdom. I listen to people. I listen to ministers whose lives have produced the results that I desire with all humility. That's why I respect the Bible. I don't just read it. I don't just believe it. I truly respect it because this is a compendium of God's wisdom. Any man who walks with the light that is written here will change his life. This is what changed my life so far. How could I ignore it? I don't read it to get a message. I don't read it to cry so that I can speak well. They are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. Please pay attention on developing your mind. Jordan Bookstore is here. Jordan is here seated. Buy the truth and sell it not. Look for the areas in your life where the devil is singing choruses and marching unhindered and find relevant materials. By the grace of God, we have taught different messages across different places. If the economy is whipping you financial dominion, part one to four, the wealthy place, right? Activating seasons of greatness, activating breakthrough, the ministry of destiny help us extraordinary accomplishment the cost sit down with these teachings and listen to them and stand up with both the knowledge and the impartation and change your life it says they that sat in darkness have seen a great light it was a lamentation in Nephtah and Zebulun it said they that sat in darkness have seen a great light you don't rise because of desire until your light comes you will never rise say amen the bible tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds to be transformed by the renewing of our minds i'd like you to pray very quickly in one minute and say father every mindset that has limited my life whether it came from culture whether it came from my upbringing every mindset reveal it to me and I'm willing to drop it. Go ahead and pray in one minute very quickly. Every mindset that is keeping me poor no matter what I do money doesn't come to me. Every mindset that keeps me limited it looks like I'm a failure in everything. In relationships I'm a failure. Every mindset that makes good things leave me please change my mindset. It may not be my fault. I inherited it. It's what my father taught me. It's what my mother taught me. It's what my culture taught me. People in my family and my lineage, that's what they believe. But Lord, I submit to you. Lift me beyond culture. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy sea I am strong 
When I am on your shoulder You raise me up I went up by revelation Listen, sit down please Your mindset must change Years ago the Lord spoke to me And told me that I was hosting mindsets That came sincerely But were responsible for the limitation in my life and because you see let me tell you something by God's grace and by the privilege of God's mercies I've always been a very intelligent person all through my life it's been like that God's grace on my life and intelligent people are arrogant people it's very difficult for them to admit there is something more that they do not know are we together and so when God brought me to a point I had to break my pride and say look young man you grew up in a family under a father and a mother under a culture under a government under a system and your life is inevitably a reflection of the highest level of mental transformation and so their limitation has now become your limitation the heights they got to is where you are now and if you don't know more you will remain there forever you want to rise higher it's not just my duty alone you must get new information and I started sitting down under the mentorship of great men like Bishop David Oyedeko, great men like Dr. Miles Munro, Dr. Mike Mudok. I wanted to change my mind. I was humble and I was intentional about it. The things I read stung my ego. Some of their teachings directly insulted me. But I had to humble myself and say, look, I needed this. I wanted the anointing of the spirit in my life. I met a lot of people who were not anointed and they told me what they felt was the formula. I tried it, it didn't work and I knew that that was why they were not anointed. So I started looking for those who were truly anointed like Benny Hinn and I found the secret. Love everybody but don't follow everybody. Please be very unapologetic about not following people who do not have results. It doesn't mean you castigate people doesn't mean you criticize people i have no loyalty for anybody who doesn't have results you can teach me how to live well a social life how to be a kind person but when it comes to the areas i want results i find people who have exceptional results that are a bar and a standard that's why i love jesus his life inspires me when i read about jesus i'm amazed at how invincible he was who you are following who you have allowed access to your mind is shaping the results of your life. And that's why every pastor must know that every member that sits down under your anointing and under your grace is a trust from God. They bring their minds and they bring their experiences in submission two hours, three hours every week for the rest of their lives. You better don't give them trash. You've got to give them something that will grant them access to rise. That's why every man of God must not only be anointed, you must be vast. Go for information and bring time-tested principles that can help the people of God. They will thank you, they will market you, they will bless God and they will pray for you. But you teach men junk that destroys their life, they will hate you, they will curse you and they will make sure they participate in the downfall of your life and your ministry. Number three, time is gone. The third key you need to rise above the vicissitudes of life. The third key you need to live a life of transgenerational relevance and impact. The third key is the discovery and the development of yourself and your abilities. Oh, I could spend the whole night teaching on this. The discovery, write it down. It's not as simple as you think it is. The discovery and the development of yourself first your intrinsic value not just what you offer yourself the discovery and the development of yourself and your abilities in one word value everybody say value those who are enjoying right now regardless of the economic recession 
those who are enjoying right now regardless of government policies are those who have proven themselves to be men and women of value men and women of value value is a description of the solutions you possess that can change the life of a person and a territory value is a description of the abilities you have that can prefer pragmatic practical solution to the problems of mankind I was teaching we're on a series the last series in the school of ministry and his finance and I was teaching the school of ministry and I was challenging them yesterday and telling them that the reason why many people are poor is not because of witches and wizards they are poor because they do not have any value in exchange for the rewards they desire they want rewards without value are we together someone can look at this ministry and see how God has helped us financially and with the level he has helped us and think how can young people be this blessed it's not about being young it's about being valuable are we together when a woman who has been barren for 10 years comes and in 2 months she takes her child that's result say result shout it again that's exactly what you need to prosper results not stories creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God they are waiting for the manifestation that your life becomes an unending stream of results for people if Christianity didn't have results you will not be part of it I guarantee you salvation is a result Jesus said it he did it we are witnesses and participants so we worship him are we together anybody who cannot produce results in our economy today is the person who will beg forever all kinds of results a pastor who does not stay with God to have dramatic supernatural results I don't mean falling down and rising up results of salvation results of changed lives results of the supernatural at work in the lives of people no results no value no reward it's as simple as that the discovery and the development of your giftings of your ability is the key to your exit from a life of mediocrity listen to my message activating seasons of greatness i teach there that the secret of greatness is favor but that favor does not happen on its own favor is dependent on many factors the gift of a man proverbs 18 16 the gift of a man and i always add the gift that is developed and deployed not discovered crude oil that is discovered does not bring money when it is refined then it can bring you resources there are many of us who are sitting on gold mines and yet languishing in poverty and pain there are families with potentials to rise above certain realms of mediocrity spiritually and otherwise but the inability to discover and develop our giftings this is a gift it has earned people money. Don Muen has blessed the world with it. He's also eaten with it. This thing I'm doing, proffering supernatural solutions, has brought wealth to people and has blessed others in ways that are beyond imagination. Listen, you must make up your mind that you are going to be a man or a woman of extreme value extreme value make sure you don't just write value extreme value intellectually spiritually extreme value you must be a master at something that is in demand and people will veto your background they will veto your limitations and they will bless you and call it a privilege value are you valuable tell me what about your life will make me desire you tell me what about your life will make me pay you and not feel the pain I told you the true measure of your value is when no amount given to you for your value becomes too much when people can give you 10 million and still call it a privilege you are extremely valuable no man is indispensable but there are people who are very difficult to replace may you be such a person in the name of jesus i made up my mind that i will be extremely valuable as a man of god 
extremely valuable as a leader and the key is not to make noise the key is not to snap pictures and go on Facebook snap near Lamborghini the key is not to go around and, and carry all kinds of shirts huh? Angela Galasso and wear Tom Ford and say oh, these are designers I'm wearing it that's not the key to be valuable the key to be valuable is to sit down invest in yourself sharpen your gifts Kabaratakaya as a man of God that when you hold the mic and you teach the word of God as you minister one hour under your anointing somebody is waiting with an envelope to sow and he says sir grant me the privilege to tap into this grace Jesus prepared for 33 years for 30 years he made himself extremely valuable we've not reco recovered from the honor we accrue to him today question are you valuable in your place of work are you valuable right now they are downsizing people if they downsize you you are not valuable it's as simple as that are you rising to a place of value i told you there's no such thing as learned that that is our 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 civilization has made that concept extinct you are either learning or you are unlearned there's no such thing as i'm learned progressive growth progressive development and David served his generation pastors are you preparing to serve your generation business people are you preparing to serve your generation if you have a restaurant um, in this day and age your food is still smelling smoke you are not serving your generation you are serving a generation that does not need your service are we together if you are a professional typist you are not serving your generation the generation that needed you has gone are we together are you getting what I'm saying you are a tailor are you serving your generation don't say people are not coming why should I come can you serve me are we together you are fixing phones and I bring a phone of 200,000 and you look at me and say hey, sorry sir this is not the type we fix I will not come again because what you said is that I have pegged myself I have refused to develop myself to be able to provide services at that level are we together yeah the minimum standard in the world is excellence you must prepare to serve your generation I preach in all kinds of places and I can tell you it's not just preaching by the anointing alone you must understand the systems and the environment and the protocol of where you are going to by the truth please i like you to challenge yourself and say i must be valuable say it stop envying people stop getting angry stop wishing rise up and be valuable being valuable may require you taking extra courses and trainings some of us, what you want to be valuable about may require you going to school again to further. Some of you being valuable will require you sitting with certain levels of books. Some of you, it will require you being a protege to a mentor directly over a season to learn. Whatever price it takes to have capacity to serve your generation, go for it. Are we together now? Yes. Be valuable. It's not what you are doing. It's how you are doing it. Develop your gifts. Develop your gifts. In this day and age, you want to be a worshiper. You come and hold the mic and you are chewing your mouth. You are talking rubbish. People don't have... There are too many options. Too many options. As a keyboardist, you can only play two or three keys. You are not a keyboardist. You are, you are, you are a freelance... Um, explorer of your hobbies anything worth doing is worth doing extremely well it was our fathers who says worth doing well now it's not worth doing well it's worth doing extremely hear what I'm saying you claim you're a consultant I give you a material to prepare for me arrange it intelligently and you write nonsense your grammatic construction rubbish 
right? Your, the points, your persuasions are nonsense. All your facts are outdated. Will I come to you again? Will I come to your institute again? No, sir. Even if you are my brother, call it David's School of Research. I'm not coming there again. Call it whatever you want to call it. We must strive for excellence. We must strive for mastery. The Bible says, and if a man desires mastery, yet is he not crowned until he strives lawfully. There are rules. It says, meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all. We've taken time, we're going to pray. But I want you to get this. You must get it. You must get this. You must get this. Proverbs 22 verse 29. Proverbs 22 verse 29. Seest thou a man diligent? Seest thou a man flawless? Seest thou a man creative? Seest thou a man exceptional? In whatever it is that he does, there is an assurance that he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. The reason why many people are standing before mean men, including pastors, the reason why they may never invite you to speak in a meeting or a conference somewhere is you have not proven to have the ability. You may have the anointing, but you've not worked on your communication skills. You stand on stage and twist your tongue. Nobody is hearing what you are saying. You preach like you are talking to yourself. You're not clear. Your points are not objective enough. They are not persuasive enough. You may be anointed, but you may never go far. When you are talking to your villagers, they will hear you. When you are talking to the world, they won't hear you. So if you want to remain in your village, you act like them. You think like them. You talk like them. When you want to rise, you become world class. You reinvent yourself. Nobody was born with anything. You can re-engineer yourself. Are we together? Challenge yourself. You are a tailor. All your customers have all the clothes they need. Go and reinvent yourself. Go back for a three months training. Go, go somewhere. Meet someone who has been trained in UK or in Italy. Meet someone who has worked with a designer company. Don't work with mediocres. You will be like them. And don't let anybody preach you into thinking all that is required for greatness is just prayer. You need to reinvent yourself. It's a lie that many people have carried for a very long time. And they are paying for it right now. It takes more than prayer. You must prepare yourself. Nehemiah on one hand held the sword. On another hand he was building the fence. I Daniel understood by books. The Bible says buy the truth and sell it not. Men will not give you free money like that. The days of free lunch are over. Until you show what value you have. That merits being a millionaire. Everybody just jumps. I'm a millionaire. Woo glory. We keep mocking ourselves. You don't become a millionaire by jumping. You offer the value that will compel millions coming to you. God can give you access. It's up to you to take advantage of the access. So I go back working on myself. I'm not satisfied with the level of value that I'm communicating. Now I'm telling you, the level of anointing that I desire to walk in, I've not even come near it. I've not scratched the surface to it. The level of grace and the, the dimension in the spirit that I trust to be operating in. You get to a dimension where everybody who comes to you knows his life is changed. His own sacrifice is just to see you. That is such a realm. When you get to that realm, no witch, I guarantee you, no wizard, even if the wizard comes for service, he will be part of those who will bless you. At that level, you don't pray for needs again. You just pray that the needs don't kill you. Are you ready to reinvent yourself? Are you ready to sit down? Don't run around with albums. I want to produce album. The producer who is producing doesn't know what he's doing. You, the singer, doesn't know what. You don't know any rules about music. You want to produce your album because you are hoping the members in your church will buy it. I don't listen to a song just because it's spiritual. I have ears. Physical ears. I listen to a song that is musically sound, well composed, intelligently directed, and spiritually presented. That's the kind of thing to listen to. 
Are we together? You serve restaurant, you say the most important thing is the balanced diet. No, I eat emotionally before physically. I need to eat with my mind, my eyes, my mouth. All of them must participate in the food. If it's not presentable, carry your food away. I will not buy it. I'm a member of Koinonia. I, I bless God for you. I will keep blessing you every Friday, but I'm not going to come to your restaurant. As simple as that. I bring you clothes as a tailor. You sew what you want to sew. Put pockets anywhere. Put the design anywhere. And waste materials anyhow. I'm not coming again. Very simple. Please reinvent yourself. Turn and prophesy to somebody. Say, be valuable. Be valuable. Our time is up. We're going to pray. But be valuable. Go for knowledge. Don't snore your destiny. Almost every information you need to rise is free. You just need to have the discernment to access it. It's free, but it's not cheap. It's free, but it's not cheap. I don't like lazy people. Truly, truly, I resent an attitude of laziness. People who are complacent with where they are. No, sir. You should rise to a position where no devil and no culture. As far as I'm concerned, Koinonia has not risen to one-tenth of the level of excellence we should be. All what we are doing compared to where we are going is rubbish, complete rubbish. It's just that we will permit this just because we are still preparing for that level. This, this is complete nonsense. No, this, this does not look like the blueprint. Are you challenging yourself to that level? Miracle services. This, this miracle service. This one is, this, this is Tuesday prayer band. In fact, this is not even Tuesday prayer. This is depart. Unit meeting. By the time we truly start miracle service in Koinonia, you will know it's a miracle service. Hmm. That's what we should do. Refuse to be satisfied. Where somebody comes for koinonia on a wheelchair and just as he crosses that place, just crossing that place, he stands up. The service has not started. And then nobody shouts because we see it all the time. Now that's a level. That's a dimension. Where every woman who delays doesn't give birth to a child, gives birth to at least twins, minimum, restoration plus breakthrough in one equation. Now that's results. You carry a dead body and just put him close to any car, anybody. The security man's gone, just touches the child and he comes back to life. It's a level. We can rise to that level. In your joke, you are joking, yet he's bringing the anointing. Because of how much you are infused with the anointing. Next week, we'll talk about the last dimension. Rise up on your feet, please. I'm tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. I'm tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. Prayer point number one Lord, I'm tired of where I am. Take me higher. Take me higher. Lift your voice and pray. I'm tired of my level of life. This level is bringing me pain. This level is bringing me limitation, intellectual limitation, spiritual limitation. Leadership limitation. Pray. Pray. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. Lord, I express my dissatisfaction for this level of life. For this level of life. For this level of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, access to informations 
that represent my mindset for the next level bring it to me pray access materials books men supply of superior information I cannot remain at the mental level that caused the problems I am in now I need a higher mentality higher than culture I need a higher paradigm a higher paradigm pray I embrace transformation the renewal of my mind the renewal of my mind the editing of my paradigm I embrace a life of excellence I embrace a life of competence. Mindsets that are limited. Ideologies that are limited. I drop them. I drop them. I drop them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Wrong mindsets about ministry. Wrong mindsets about business. Wrong mindsets about education. Wrong mindsets about marriage. Wrong mindsets about finances. I drop it. I drop it. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number three. Lord. You have given me gifts. Help me to sharpen those gifts so that they will stand me out. Lift your voice and pray. You have given me gifts. I am gifted. But my gifts have not been bringing rewards. My gifts have not brought honor to my life. I pay the price. I sharpen the gifts. Grant me grace. I pay the price of research and development. I pay the price of skill acquisition. I pay the price to sharpen my gift. I insist no mediocrity. I insist no average. I insist no mediocrity. I insist. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are only ready for favor when your gifts are ready to go. You are only ready for favor when your abilities are ready to go. Don't pray for favor. You will not be fair on the person who is showing you favor what are you giving in exchange don't pray for customers when your business is not outstanding enough don't pray for customers don't pray for grace pray for skill don't pray for customers don't pray for opportunities pray for access to light lift your voice and say Lord grace to develop myself grace to develop myself I'm tired of average accrediting myself by myself in mediocrity. I expose my mind. I expose my mind. I explore possibilities. I want to rise beyond the limitations created by my background. I want to rise beyond the limitations created in my life. Hallelujah. 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 Last prayer point. Lord, keep me dissatisfied until I change. Let me not rest. Wake me up in my sleep. When they are clapping for me, keep me dissatisfied until I change until I improve until I become anointed keep me dissatisfied 
keep me dissatisfied until my gifts are sharp enough keep me dissatisfied Hallelujah. 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 Please, I want to challenge everybody. Go and buy a notebook or whatever device you use. Right there. Personal development of my gifts. Write out everything God has given you that can stand you out and start sharpening it. Don't pity yourself. You may not sleep in the night. Sharpen it. Don't let sleep destroy you. Sleep has made many people poor. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the eyes, and poverty comes upon you like an arm bandit. Ladies, don't say I'm a woman. Don't say I'm a lady. Go and sit down and sharpen your gifts. If it's cooking, sharpen it. Don't cook your food to eat it alone. Cook a kind of food that presidents can eat. Sharpen your gifts. You're a man of God. Don't run around looking for ministrations. Sit down. Open this Bible. Just, you don't even need to read too many books. Just sit down and understand the word of God. We, we roam around too much. You know, sometimes I come out in the afternoon and I see people broad daylight roaming around as if they don't have what to do with their lives. Gisting, gossiping from one place to the other. You close from work. Go home and build yourself. You travel to go and see a friend. Go and gossip about this. Go and cause trouble in somebody's house. You sit down. Please commit yourself to development. There is no way out of poverty if you don't develop yourself. It's not magic. It's not a charm. God is not a genie. If you want to be outstanding, you want to be a territorial principality, you must have something to offer. And it's not just prayer alone. Don't just package yourself. Have content. Content indeed. You are an artist. Have you not seen other drawings? Are you not seeing the rubbish you are doing? Improve yourself. You keep putting banners all around for your designs. I will never come. And everybody who thinks like me will never come to you. It's not demons. You are not competent enough. I have a computer center. You are not producing anything. You produce late. You don't do a good job. Your papers are inferior. Everything is inferior. Your customer care is inferior. Why in the world should I come when there are alternatives? You make popcorn. Your popcorn is burnt. You are not hospitable. You are not serious. You open late. You close early. You will be poor for sure. You go late for work. You go to work by 12. You are part of the ghost workers. They are going to drive soon. Please work on yourself. I'm being sincere with you. I know that I'm hard on us this night, but you will thank me in the days to come. Don't be lazy. Don't, don't sit down and say, I'm a child. Don't pamper yourself. Those of us with children, begin to train them. Put that mindset of seriousness and vision. Let children roam around anywhere. Once they, are, they attain an age of discretion, let them sit down. Habits can be imbibed. Produce champions not mediocre. This is what has destroyed Africa. We are fetish about everything. We have taken the issue of demons outside of the jurisdiction and we justify our carelessness with mysticism. You can't be close to me and not be serious. You must be consistently developing yourself. Otherwise, you will not be close to me for sure. It's not just prayer. Many of you think that this ministry, what you see being done, is just because apostle is anointed. I wish it's just the anointing. There is a labor dimension of ministry. You access wisdom. You pay the price. 
when you are sleeping I'm awake so when you see a man's reward don't covet the reward look at the price that is being paid first don't sit down there saying these are young people no if you can pay the price you can carry the goods father in the name of Jesus I pray tonight you have challenged us tonight to have passion for you you have challenged us tonight to contend for renewal you have challenged us tonight that the key to our wealth is our value the key to our wealth is your is our value and Lord I pray in the name of Jesus let everyone under the sound of my voice and all those following online may they carry this fire in the name of Jesus Christ create a dissatisfaction in their spirit Lord there are people you need to take sleep away from so that they can settle down and be serious with their destiny Lord we declare as individuals and as a ministry that we are not in recession in the name of Jesus we sympathize with our nation and we ask that you bring this nation out of recession but Lord we declare that these principles will exempt us let none beg in this place oh God let none be a failure in this place let none be a weakling in this place raise men and women of influence you have told us this is a year of multiplied grace and influence multiply the grace upon our lives multiply our influence in the name of Jesus give Jesus praise everybody Hallelujah. hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and in